This is our virtual field trip for the Laurel family, the Loraceae, and you'll see a couple of different things. There'll be some fun stuff, and I hope everybody gets something out of it, and I present the Loraceae without any further ado. This is avocado. It is in the Loraceae, or the Laurel family, um, grown for their fruits. This is one of my two avocados. This is the other one. Notice that, you know, the leaves are very smooth at the edges, which is a characteristic of the family. They are um, alternately arranged. They are simple leaves, not compound. Um, other interesting thing is that the young leaves on the young plants look a lot different than the leaves on the mature plants. It's just a different shape and color altogether. Um, we got some mantises living on here to kind of eat away at some of the mealy bugs and such that are living on them. But it's got this nice multicolored wood, which you will also see in sassafras, which is also in the Loraceae, which we're going to see later in this video. Um, so this is one of the Loraceae. All right. So we have a member of the Loraceae that is a very major economic boost for a lot of areas in the southwest. Avocado. Avocado. It's a different cultivar of avocado. Okay. So, avocado is real fun. We're going to do a bit of uh, examination of these guys. These droops. All right, so this is a big old avocado. Um, I don't remember exactly which cultivar this one happened to be, but we're gonna open it up very carefully. I don't wanna damage the seed on the inside. Although a little scarification won't harm it. Got it. All right, so yeah, there we go. couple things to note here. So, inside is this very oily, fatty, very soft um, flesh. And this is very good for your skin. It's very healthy stuff. And this, and you can see this very tough, very, very strong, thick um, outer covering. Um, and that's, that's really tough stuff. Avocados are really interesting because their main disperser is an extinct ground sloth. The only reason they still exist is because humans decided that their fruits were delicious and they are very nutritious. They're very good for you. I don't personally like the taste of avocado. I just, they don't have enough flavor for me. Um, I really need, like, when I eat anything, it's got to have a good amount of flavor. Otherwise, it just doesn't appeal to me. And so I find them fairly flavorless. I like the plants, and so we are going to grow these pits that I take out. Um, now, this is a seed instead of an actual pit in the sense that, like, this is not a seed inside of a coating. This itself is the seed. Um, and avocados are uh, one of those plants that have the... Uh, Hypagius germination, where the cotyledons don't leave the ground. The cotyledons don't actually leave the seed itself. They don't have chlorophyll. Um, now what we want to do first is we're going to rinse this um, avocado seed off. Because the oils and other chemicals in the uh, fruit are going to inhibit its germination. So I'm going to rinse this guy. I'm going to warm that water up because that's just a little cold and that's obnoxious. I need some warm water. Why isn't it warming up? I think our hot water heater is broken. I'm gonna be an avocado tree. Da -da 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 -da. Oh yeah, now it's warming up. Okay. And I'm just gonna keep doing this until I kind of feel all the goop kind of gone from it. I normally would use a sponge or something to help me out. That should be fine. Set that aside for now. 
So there's all this fleshy fruit material here. This would be um, very appealing to a ground sloth or to people who happen to like avocado. Avocado isn't just useful for that, though. Um, it's creamy and oily. People will um, sometimes use it as a substitute for egg or cream or milk in various recipes. Um, of course, it's a um, staple if you're making guacamole, which is a, uh, what's it called? A dip. Um, actually... was not copyright infringement due to fair use. And then we have Haas avocado, which is like the avocado like everybody's familiar with, but it's not the only avocado cultivar. We're going to remove the pit from this guy as well. This almost reminds me of like those uh, chalk dinosaur egg toys. I don't know if those are still sold, but I recommend people like everywhere like get one in their lifetime. And it's like if you have like a chalkboard, it's like the shape of a dinosaur egg, and you basically draw with it and you whittle it down because in the center is a plastic dinosaur, and eventually you'll get to the plastic dinosaur. So like we could just pretend this is a plastic dinosaur even though it's not a plastic dinosaur. So, for avocado seeds, I find that the best way to get them to germinate is not to poke them with toothpicks and then um, try and uh, put them in some water that way. What I do is I get a bag. I have a couple paper towels. Get them kind of moist. Put them down. We're going to wrap these uh, seeds in the paper towels. Okay. So that they're completely covered by the moist paper towels. Then what I do... Put them in the bag. Trap a good amount of air in the bag with them so that they can respire and metabolize the uh, reserves in those cotyledons, because that's what those cotyledons are for. And so this is going to allow me to get them to germinate without a problem. And what will happen is they'll start to split open, and then I'll just put them in soil, and that will give me some avocado seedlings. This is spice bush. It is one of our native Loraceae, it's known as Lindera benzoin. This is commonly grown as an ornamental. Um, the crushed leaves apparently smell like lemon pledge, fun fact. Um, so like all Loraceae, they have a um, protandrinous flowering mode where the male portion of the flower is open and ready to put out its pollen before the female portion of the flower, the um, stigma, becomes receptive to pollen. And this is a mechanism to prevent self-pollination. Um, recall that avocado does a thing where it has the flowers close up after a day of being either male or female, and the next day it opens up and is the opposite sex, basically. And some avocados are male first and some avocados are female first. And if you're farming avocados, you have to have both types in order to get pollination and thus fruits. Now, spice bush 
um, has very distinctive winter t time buds. They're um, bead-like and yellowy, and they're all over the sides of the stems. Very easy to determine what space bush is. The leaves are very loraceae like um, really distinctive plant, really good pollinator plant, and it's a really good plant for spice for swallowtails and a few other native lepidopterans, such as the Promethea moth. Um, so this is one of our um, Loraceae. Lots of it in the woods around here. There's a path that cuts through the woods over that way, um, and I call it the spice bush trail just because there's spice bush all over both sides of it. This individual is planted intentionally. They do have cultivars of these this species that are meant for a more ornamental appearance. I think this might just be the wild type, just planted here and allowed to grow wild. I don't know. I usually see them in the middle of the woods so they're not as big, but they do generally keep a shrub-like form. So this is sassafras. It is one of the Loraceae. You can tell it's sassafras mostly because of the different colors to the bark. You've got this light green bark and then you've got a darker bark. Very large old sassafras trees have very distinctive deeply fissured bark. They can actually get quite huge even though you generally only see them reaching heights of about 10 to 15 feet tall. I have seen 40 foot specimens that have lived long enough to become quite large. Um, it's a deciduous Loraceae. Uh, most Loraceous plants are not deciduous. We're going to find another deciduous Loraceae that's found around here that's very important. Um, but this is um, sassafras. All over the place, kids. All right. This is cinnamon. Um, it's part of the Loraceae. And it's a little bit unusual because we don't use the leaves or the flowers or the fruits of this particular species, we actually use the bark. Um, so the plant produces a number of different compounds that it protects its bark with. Um, you can just see this kind of curled, raspy, dry stick that people can grind up so they can use it to flavor a number of different things. And it's very strong, and so... Um, it's fragrant and it doesn't need to be used in large quantities in order to produce the desired effect. And so cinnamon is grown and harvested. They usually just peel the bark for this type of thing. Now, another very important loraceous plant for um, the culinary world is bay laurel. And so this is actually a laurel. And so we can see it has a typical loraceous leaf. Now, unfortunately, we can't really um, see it on the actual plant because these are just removed leaves. It's very tough and shiny, um, very leathery in texture. Now, notice how that leaf margin is very smooth. Um, now there are some plants that are called laurels that are in the rosaceae, like cherry laurel, which is an invasive, especially as you go further south. Now, this... Um, Cherry laurel has serrations along the edges of the leaf. This doesn't. There's a little bit of um, rugosity or uh, undulation where the um, margin on the three-dimensional plane does a little bit of wave motion. Almost like it's wee. But the edge itself, if you were to hold it flat, is smooth. Now if there were prominent serrations along this edge you wouldn't want to use this because it would be a um, toxic species. Um, so this is obviously grown and sold as bay laurel so it is bay laurel but you just want to be careful if you're collecting things from outside that you're using the correct material.
because cherry laurel is not even in the Loraceae. Bay laurel, very good for different flavoring. People can like make a soup where they just throw a bay laurel leaf hole in the soup and that adds flavor to it because it's so strong and durable and things like that. Now, on my point about laurel, that is not in the Loraceae. Hey, you're not in the Loraceae. Stop lying to us. We know you're not in the Loraceae. Loraceae don't walk on the ground like that. Okay. This is mountain laurel, but it's not really a laurel. So it's called mountain laurel. It's a bit different than anything in the Loraceae. Um, although you wouldn't necessarily be able to tell. Loraceae don't typically have these spots. This is actually caused by a disease. This is the bark of the plant. But this is in the Aracaceae, the Heath family, which is a family that we're going to get into in a later semester that has a lot of important food crops in it. Not mountain laurel particularly. Um, it's actually the state flower of Connecticut, which is where I'm from. But other than that, it's just, um, you know, something. The, f the fruits are a lot different than um, the Loraceae. It's a capsule. Um, I like that, actually. 